demonstrating the differences in performance as well as energy savings, uh, and then show you some applications. This is all stuff that we're familiar with. You've got off-grid off sites, you've got sites with intermittent power. Uh, we're trying to become more energy efficient by reducing the power consumption. We have uh, battery compartments, cabinets, and then of course the, all the uh, shelters that we're dealing with. If, no matter what shelter you're dealing with, uh, wherever the power is coming from, whether it's coming in intermittently uh, from, or it's coming in reliably from grid power, whether it's coming in from uh, solar, wind, however the power is coming in, there's still some way to store that energy. That coupled with the equipment that's in there has to be managed thermally. And that's where air conditioning or heat exchanger or some sort of cooling device comes into play. Certain devices have temperature requirements that are below what your ambient conditions will see. And that's where air conditioning is important. Uh, particularly if you're dealing with batteries, you're trying to maintain 25C, then in that situation, you're going to have to have some sort of active thermal management solution to keep the uh, batteries at 25C where your ambient conditions can be much warmer. This is a video just showing an air conditioner on a cabinet. Uh, or on a large cabinet or a small shelter, you can see that when the temperature is inside, we can actually cool the temperature down below what the outside temperature is. Works just like air conditioner at your home. On the technical side, this is essentially what we're doing. We're just moving that heat that's inside and exhausting it to the outside. That's being done actively through a compressor and pumping the refrigerant through the system. The condenser is exhausting all that energy. It has to exhaust the energy from inside the shelter as well as the energy from the compressor. AC voltage is what we're most familiar with. Most of our homes are running off AC voltage. However, the DC air conditioners we're starting to see a lot more of, and the DC's direct current, uh, there's a lot of advantages to it. They're much more efficient and that efficiency is usually made through the compressor, which is an actual DC motor, as well as the fans themselves. Variable speed comes into play because you can operate the compressor and the fans at a uh, slower speed, which gives you high, high um, energy efficiency by basically consuming less energy for the times where you don't need that, uh, that high performance. And we'll see in just a minute how that uh, can actually play out compared to the north, the uh, AC voltage air conditioners. Again, this is a picture of a DC air conditioner on a battery cabinet. So you can imagine this inside your shelter where you're trying to maintain those battery temperatures uh, in a two zone, in a dual zone uh, cooling solution adjustable set points, all the features that you need out of a normal air conditioner you can get with a DC air conditioner. Compared to the TEC thermoelectric solution, that's the other uh, prevalent active uh, so the, uh, solutions out there, um, much more energy efficient. TEC is fairly uh, are limited in terms of cooling capacity as well as what their efficiency is. We set up a study over the course of two weeks where we had an 800 watt heat load inside a small cabinet, which you see here. Uh, 1,000 watt air conditioner, set the set point at 25C, uh, fairly uh, normal springtime temperatures. We had three units, an AC voltage air conditioner, which is running like yours does at home, on, off, the pressure comes on, it goes to full speed and shuts off. Condenser fans, vapor fans, when they come on, they're on at full speed. Compare that to a DC air conditioner operating under the same parameters. All we did was just move it to a DC compressor, DC <laughs> condenser fan, DC evaporator fan. Still running on and off, so when it comes on, it went full speed. And then thirdly, we had a DC air conditioner where we were controlling the compressor and controlling those fans optimally for the management 
solution that the management that was needed at the time. The problem. This is the guts of it. Uh, the AC air conditioner compared to just an DC air conditioner, almost a 50% drop in, uh, in, in uh, power consumption. Uh, so significantly improved energy efficiency, but with the variable speed, an additional 10% in savings. It gets even better than that. Here's the temperatures inside the shelter. The red line up here is the uh, where the temperature inside was varying from 20 to 25 inside the shelter. Uh, supply temperature coming out as low as 8 degrees. The supply temperature being the temperature coming out of the air conditioner into the shelter. Uh, this is an AC situation. This is typically what you're going to see where things running full speed. DC, similar type situation. Again, about a 5 degree difference on the uh, maintained temperature within the shelter and temperatures a little bit warmer but still uh, fairly cool temperatures coming out at, into the shelter. Variable speed. You can see a big difference here. Uh, temperatures now being maintained within just a couple degrees instead of five degrees, as well as the uh, supply temperature being fairly steady above 15. So it reduces some of the issues we have with thermal shocks and concerns that you have with that uh, condensation. Um, anything that uh, you're trying to maintain a tighter temperature. And again, this is also a lower energy consumption. So we're getting the best of both worlds, tighter control and lower energy consumption. What's going on? The blue lines that you see uh, up and down the, 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 for the most time, that's the compressor coming on, off, compressor coming on, off, on, off, on, off for that entire period of time. Whereas on the variable speed, that compressor is running continuously, and only when the temperature gets a little bit warm does it even speed up. Uh, there's some further advantages in this that you're seeing higher reliability by allowing that compressor to run continuous as opposed to just cycling uh, as much as it was doing on a on-off solution. DC by itself is uh, proving to be high, more efficient than an AC solution. Variable speed is an even bigger step in uh, improved efficiency. Why is that happening? From the previous slide, you can see that the compressor, the fans are able to run uh, and basically optimize the thermal solution for the load that's inside the cabinet. Part of that load in the cabinet, again, is coming from the ambient conditions, so those are going to vary throughout the year. Dual zone, so dual zone solutions, in this case you could put a DC air conditioner on just your battery cabinet, use that to cool the battery, allow the ambient temperature that's around it inside your shelf to be a warm temperature. A lot of sites you see uh, will, that are not optimized thermally, if you're trying to maintain everything in there at 25C, it's a uh, poor use of energy by maintaining a little bit warmer temperature inside the shelter that's more tuned to the equipment and then if you have batteries cool just the batteries down to that 25. Using that DC air conditioner gives you the optimal energy performance. Same picture here uh, showing in a different way where in some cases you can get by with just direct air cooling, free air cooling through the shelter and have the DC air conditioner cooling just the batteries by themselves. Almost there. <laughs> uh, real quick, study we did with Rutgers University, similar situation, getting a PUE of 1.1. Um, some various applications, Nigeria, Bangladesh, Africa, you can see that DC air conditioners is not just something that we're seeing in uh, certain locations, but seeing them a little everywhere. 
I mentioned most of these benefits. Uh, we're seeing low energy cost, higher performance, uh, better noise, longer life by using the DC. And lastly, just about Dan Thurm, we're a global company. I'm out of Spartanburg, South Carolina, uh, focusing on the America's market. Any questions for Rick? About the cost improvement? Uh, right now, I think we're seeing around 20%. But it's it's you know, it varies a lot of it. You can almost say uh, it is a little bit more expensive, but that return on the, that investment, one two years. Where uh, you know, I mean, uh, in recent years, as early as two years ago, the price of the virtual was at two x. So the supply chain options have gotten far more robust in the last two years. I think there's a lot of opportunities to scale this. Uh, I have a question. Sure. So when uh, environmental control, then they go to run all the time, but they just run slower? Run slower. And slower. that's much more efficient? That's much more efficient because the amount of energy that the motors are taking to run at maximum yeah. is the tax. It's exponential. Well, plus it's not kicking on and it's off. It's not kicking on and off. And uh, with AC motors, when they kick on, you have a high inverse current that you have to deal with. Um, so your equipment's got to be able to handle it. In some cases, uh, you may try to take an AC motor and just run it off of an inverter. A lot of inverters can't handle it. Yeah, I was going to say inductive load that quick. That's a tough one. So uh, DCs, with our, with the DC air conditioner, you can start up with just a couple amp drop and then slowly ramp up. Uh, you don't have that big inverter. I think a lot of the whole residential air conditioner. There starts to go with the liquid as well. What DC voltage? The ones that we have operate out of 48 volt, minus 48 volt. What's the typical continuous wattage? Uh, continuous wattage or the average, I guess, because you said it's very old for the air conditioning. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's going to depend on capacity. It's also going to depend on what speeds it's running. So if you are running an air conditioner, and the ambient temperature is 35, it's going to have a higher current draw than if the ambient temperature is 25. Relative to an AC air conditioner, we're seeing about a 25-50% uh, difference. The zone 2 air conditioner was the same type DC vertical? Or uh, on the, uh, the zone 2, the better one. Yeah, 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 that's correct. On, on the one that we showed in the slide, Putting the DC air conditioner on the battery box provides that same uh, benefit. So are you thinking to the outside from that from that battery box itself also? Yeah, you can go. Yeah, uh, there's outside. venting solutions to get the hydrogen out. That's what you're concerned about. Condenser outside. Hmm? The condenser outside. Yeah, well, the, in that solution there where the, um, uh, the, battery, <coughs> the battery box is inside the shelter, the condenser is still inside that shelter. So the shelter is just exhausting. Now the shelter has to remove the heat of that air conditioner, but it's a fairly small air conditioner. We're not talking about a 